Hello everyone, coming to you from the Arcadia Church of God on Route 70 East. Our message this week will be entitled, The Great White Throne Judgment. I want to talk about that, and if we get into the judgment seat of Christ, I can explain the difference. But this is essentially, the Great White Throne Judgment, there will not be any Christians there, uh, physically in their spiritual bodies. They've already made their way into heaven. So everyone that has rebelled against God, didn't want to receive Jesus as their Savior, the list could be a thousand miles long, but they've rejected him as the bottom line. Didn't want any part of him in this current life, and so now they've passed on. They've gone into a place of separation from God, which is hell, awaiting the judgment day of the great white throne judgment. Now, some would say, well, if they're already in hell, why even bother having a judgment? Because God is sovereign. He's going to give them a chance to present their argument that they shouldn't be cast into the lake of fire. They're going to have a defense attorney there, which is Satan probably. And he's going to try to coerce and do everything. I don't know that he'll be there, but it's going to be the fact that this person individually, there won't be any group judgments, will try to talk Christ out of sending them into the lake of fire. And he's going to bring forth all the evidence. There's going to be a book. There's actually two books, just so we're clear. The one book is the Book of Life. That's where you and I as Christians are in. And that gives us entry into heaven through Jesus Christ. And the other book uh, is going to be open, and there's probably going to be many of those because there's been so many people lived down through the years from Cain all the way up until the last person that goes into judgment there. So it's going to be an individual type judgment standing before Christ and presenting the argument that, hey, I think I was accused falsely, but all the evidence will be on display. So, but God, again, being sovereign, wants to give everyone the opportunity to present their case. So you'll find the great white throne judgments in Revelations chapter 20. We're going to be reading verses 11 through 15. So if you have your Bibles, Revelations chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. This is John speaking in the book of Revelation. That's singular. There are no more revelations. We may be illuminated through scriptures, but there is no more uh, that for the future because everything is written in the work, the, the Bible, and we can read that and study that. Chapter 20, verse 11. This is John seeing in the Spirit. Then I saw a great white throne, and one seated on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence, his being Jesus Christ, and no place was found for them. They're, they're gone. Heaven and earth is gone. Now, I want to just clear that up a little bit. Jesus is in the third heaven. So he's sitting there, so the heaven that he's in will never be done away with until it comes down into the new Jerusalem. John said, I also saw the dead. Not only did I see Jesus sitting on the throne, but I also saw the dead, the great and small, standing before the throne. And the books, as I said earlier, were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. So they will be more in the books of unsaved than probably the saved, the way I see this. And the dead were judged according to their works by what was written in the books. Now, I want to stay with the great white throne judgment, but there will be a time. Now, Christians will not be at the great white throne judgment, but at the judgment seat of Christ, which is for Christians, no sinners will be there. And we can talk about that another time if we haven't. Then the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades, that's hell, gave up the dead from 
that were in them, each one was judged according to the works. Each one, as I said earlier. Death and Hades, death and hell, were thrown into the lake of fire. That's after the judgment. This is the second death, the second time that a person has no relationship with Jesus. So they're cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death, the second separation. And anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake. So the books are all open. Jesus sits down, begins his judgment of the first individual. It may be Cain, I don't know. Don't need to go there. But in John chapter 5, let's talk about what we just read. John in chapter 5, verses 27, 28, and 29. And hath given him authority, that's Jesus from the Father, to execute, execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. So that's only given to one person besides God the Father, and that is Jesus Christ, which is a God, the Son of the Father. There won't be any other gods there. The Holy Ghost may be there. So we have the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But judgment is going to be executed by Jesus Christ and him only. Now remember the heavens and the earth fled when he sat down. Marvel not at this. Let's not think and wonder and plunder and try to figure out, well, if a person is in an explosion and their body parts or they're cremated, let's not get into all of that. The Bible tells us that they're all going to stand there. There are mysteries in the Bible that no man can answer. So why marvel at it? Just read it and believe it by faith. For the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. He's going to tell them, come out. They're going to hear him and they're going to know that voice. To me, that means that somewhere in their life he has spoken to them through and by the power of the Holy Ghost to come into redemption. So they're going to hear his voice and know that voice. So that tells me there's a deeper meaning to this than just a person dying and saying at the judgment seat, well, I, I, never, I never heard from anyone. He's going to say, you heard my voice. And shall come forth. So the graves shall come forth. They which have done good, that's the other judgment of the Christians, unto the resurrection of life. Now, a lot of people get confused here. One resurrection is for the Christians. The other resurrection, rapture, is for the unsaved. It's very easy once you get into it. And they have, and they that have done evil, that will be the, the resurrection of the dead, unto the resurrection of damnation. That's John Verse 5, chapter 5, verse 29. So let's talk a little bit more about this throne. We already see that everyone is going to stand there that's unsaved, the unredeemed, the non-Christian. So what is it about this throne that separates it from the throne of a king or a queen, a president, whatever the case may be? What separates it? Well, let's get into that next and see how this works. We behold the throne through the word of God, you and I, and the tri tribunal of judgment. It's great and white. There's not a speck of dust on it. White represents pureness, righteousness. Very glorious and perfectly just and righteous. It's just. He's sovereign. He's not going to misjudge. He's not going to make a mistake. It's going to be very to the point. The throne of iniquity that established wickedness by a law has no fellowship in this court of righteousness. They shouldn't even be there. They had the opportunity to repent. This is a court of righteousness. And you come in here wanting to be a part of it, he would say to them, maybe. Christ would say to them, maybe. This is a righteous course. You were never a part of me. You were never a part of my discipleship. You never went out and witnessed. 
It was all about you. In other words, it was all about me. It was all about what I wanted. Not what you wanted, Jesus. But it's what I wanted. I was determined. I saw on Fox the other day, we don't need more God in America. We need more atheist. Let's see how that atheist looks when he stands before the creator of the heavens and the earth and the one that's going to sentence him to eternal damnation. Let's see how you think about that. The appearance of the judge, that's Jesus, and that is the Lord, Jesus Christ, who then puts on such majesty. Wow! They're going to look up at him. They're not going to be face to face with him. None of us are equal to be face to face with Jesus Christ. They're going to look up at him and see with his train, with his robe, what a majestic God he is. And terror that the earth and the heaven flee from his face. They're going to run from his face. Such power, such righteousness, righteousness such brightness that the heavens and the earth say, I, I can't, I'm not on the same page with him. I'm not equal with him. He is now calling judgment. I'm out of here. And there is no place found for them. Where they will disappear to is a word I don't know but they do disappear. They do. They're no longer found. Interesting question. Where does Jesus put them? Heavens and the earth. That's the first and second heavens. Marvel not. Don't think about it. Just believe it. John said, I saw the dead. Now they were not dead now. So they can't be dead and be judged. They are alive. But they died without accepting Jesus as their Savior. He said, I saw and great. I saw small and great. That is, I saw young and old, low and high, poor and rich. I saw every type of thing that a person in this life Billions of people have done. He said, I saw it all. I saw kings. I saw queens. I saw presidents. I saw members of whatever standing there. Great people. People that I remember. Maybe even King Herod was standing there. Maybe Herodias was standing there. If she didn't repent, if he didn't repent. Not only those that are found alive in the coming of Christ. In other words, when this happens, people that's still alive on this earth that has not accepted Jesus and he's offered that repentance, they're going to come before him as well at some point in time. But all who have died before, not only those that are alive will have to face him, but also those who have died from out of the grave. And the grave shall surrender the bodies of men, women, young and old, poor and rich. Hell itself, hell shall surrender the souls of the wicked. He's going to pull them out of there. Right now, that's the first, that's the death of separation. Hell, it's, hell shall surrender the souls of the wicked. The sea shall surrender the many who have seemed to have been lost in it. So when we think of uh, the fact that, well, what happens if uh, somebody was thrown overboard and, and uh, the elements disposed of their f flesh? They're going to stand there. Everything on this planet at some time or another, every human being, at one point or another, will stand before him. By their works shall men be condemned. So John here can, Christians get a little confused. No, he's going from one group to another, back to this, back to this. So you're clear. No Christians are going to be there. But he saw those who, those who had made a covenant with death. 
They made a covenant. There is no such thing as a God. No, I won't accept him. And they made an agreement with hell. I'm coming to you because I'm rejecting him. We don't need more God. We need more atheists. Okay, let's see how that that's, flies in the face of Christ like the Osean. Let's start over. And those who have, been, have made a covenant with death and an agreement with hell shall be condemned and cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. That is eternal. That's the first ones to visit that are going to be the Antichrist, the false prophet, and those are going to be the first ones in there. And then all of their cohorts that he convinced to join his group like he did a third of the angels is going to be able to see him day and night. Of course, there may not be any night there. I'm just using an example. But can you imagine being in a place where the one that convinced you to reject Jesus, you're living in the same neighborhood as him in the lake of fire, and there's no nothing, nothing you can do about it. I mean, you can't kill him, Satan, false prophet, the Antichrist. It's only Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. They're the ones that gets to go into the lake of fire first, and that's going to be on down the road. Sometime, if we're not, uh, if you're not getting uh, top Bible prophecy, it would be a good thing to try to find someone that you can relate to, be it on TV or be it in person, that you can have them explain more in detail. These messages are short, so that we can uh, try to try to do what's called CIT, CIT. That's uh, staying with the intent of the text. In other words, I don't, I don't talk about the great white throne judgment and then go talk about David. So I can if I'm preaching or teaching, but in this case, I want to stay with one subject, the central intent of the text, and that is the great white throne judgment. In review, in verse 11, it's the final exam of the judgment, final test. No Christian will be there. There's no more chances. Verse 12, ordinary men, kings and queens, president, will be there. No Christians. Hell was opened up and was judged. No Christians are at this judgment, only the unredeemed. Death, which is a second death, and hell, that's the new separation from God. He's up in the intensity of his judgment. Verse 15, no name in book of life. If there's no name in that book of life, you're, that person's cast into the lake of fire. In John 5, verses 27 through 29, in verse 27, Jesus has all authority. Not a little itsy bitsy teeny weeny bit. He has all authority. He will not be questioned by anyone. They'll be able to present their case, but there will not be a higher judge in that court. John 5 and 28. Don't wonder. Don't set it. You know, what, what's interesting is People, oh, I read this scripture and I just don't understand it. Well, keep reading it, pray about it, ask the Lord. Don't try to go down all these rabbit holes with, well, I think it means this and I think it means that. If we are on good standing with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, He's going to reveal to us. We have a conscience that tells us what's right and wrong. John 5 and verse 29. So we see Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. I just want to throw this in. That's a separate judgment. There would be no sinners there. And I'm not being repetitious. But that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. You can read that. There won't be any sinners there. At the great white throne judgment, again, no Christians. So I hope you've uh, gotten something out of this. And it's a blessing to you. Thank you and God bless.